On November 20th, 1941, the lights of Fremantle Harbor awaited the return of a hero, the Royal Australian cruiser HMAS Sydney. A formidable vessel, Sydney was a modified Lender-class light cruiser, boasting a length of 562 feet and armed with eight six-inch main guns. With a top speed of 32.5 knots, she could strike with precision and power and made for a fierce opponent in naval warfare. Yet, as days passed, the harbor remained eerily silent. Sydney, with her crew of gallant sailors and a wildly capable captain, was nowhere to be seen. Four days later, air and sea searches painted a grim picture off the shores of Shark Bay. Amidst the vast expanse, boats and rafts emerged carrying survivors, but not from Sydney. These were sailors from Cormoran, a German merchant raider. Through the fragmented tales of these survivors, an epic naval clash came to light, a duel that left both vessels scuttled. But as every tale of Cormoran was recounted, a haunting void grew larger. Why, after such a monumental encounter, was there not a single Australian soldier left to tell their side of the story? HMAS Sydney, the pride of the Royal Australian Navy, was fast and heavily armed. Laid on July 8, 1933, she was initially ordered for the Royal Navy as HMS Phaeton. But when the Australian government purchased the cruiser during her construction, she was renamed after the city of Sydney as one of three modified Lender-class light cruisers with a maximum speed of 32 knots. Stretching 555 feet in width and with a beam of 56 feet, Sydney, when fully loaded, displaced 9,080 tons. Sydney's armament was a force to be reckoned with. She boasted eight six-inch guns, 14 303 caliber Lewis guns, and eight 21-inch torpedo tubes. She was also equipped with an aircraft catapult capable of accommodating a supermarine walrus float plane, essential for reconnaissance missions. She sheltered a crew of 41 officers, 594 sailors, six Royal Australian Air Force personnel, and civilian canteen staff. As World War II dawned, Sydney quickly made her mark. In June 1940, during the Battle of Cape Spada, she sent the Italian cruiser Bartolomeo Colleoni to the ocean's depths, further elevating her renown and reputation. After that victory, she performed escort duties until January 1941. Then, recognizing the looming threats of German raiders and submarines, her mission pivoted to safeguarding Australia's vast coastline. In stark contrast to Sydney, the Cormoran merchant raider of the Kriegsmarine was a master of disguise, designed to seamlessly integrate into any nation's fleet. She was built for the long haul, with an astounding cruising endurance of 352 days. Behind discreet sliding shields, Cormoran boasted six medium-caliber cannons, a modest assortment of anti-aircraft weapons, and six 21-inch torpedoes. Additionally, she was equipped with 360 ship-launched electric mines and another 30 mines designed to be deployed by her high-speed motor launch. For aerial reconnaissance, she housed two Arado 196A1 seaplanes. However, unlike many warships of her time, Cormoran lacked the damage control and firefighting systems crucial in battle. At the helm of this Kriegsmarine ship was Capitan Zerze Theodor Detmers. Despite being only 38, the youngest of the German raider captains, he had ample expertise. Under his leadership were 26 officers and 375 crew members, all relying on his prowess. On December 3, 1940, Detmers initiated Cormoran's maiden voyage from Gottenhafen, reaching her operational zones in the Indian Ocean and Australian waters just over a week later. Her first victory came quickly, sinking the Greek steamer Antonis on January 6, 1941. By the 18th, she had added the tanker British Union to her list, guided only by her searchlights. She continued her spree throughout the winter, sinking British freighters Africa Star and Eurylocus and capturing 170 prisoners, delivered during a rendezvous with the German tanker Nordmark. Although engine issues grounded her in March and April, Cormoran's tally soon grew when she also added British tanker Agneta, Canadian tanker Canadolite, British freighter Craftsman, and Greek steamer Nicholas DL to her list of victims, of which all but one sank. During a May trip to the Cape of Good Hope, Captain Detmers made another strategic move by ordering his crew to camouflage Cormoran as the Japanese merchant vessel Sakito Maru with a freshly painted black hull. Her initial Indian Ocean endeavors bore little fruit, but fortunes changed in late June. 
Homerin struck twice, sinking the Yugoslav steamer Velebit and the Australian vessel Mariba on June 26th. In the aftermath of her mounting recent victories, Homerin underwent another significant transformation. She was no longer under the disguise of a Japanese vessel. Instead, an intricate overhaul made her look like the Dutch freighter Strat Malacca. This new identity featured a distinguished brown superstructure offset by a striking black funnel. Operating extensively in the Indian Ocean, she experienced a dry spell until September 26, 1941, when she claimed her tenth victim, the Greek steamer Stamatios G. Empiricos. By then, Komarin's tally rose to over 68,000 tons of sunk cargo, but the merchant raider's most demanding encounter was yet on the horizon. On October 16, 1941, roughly a thousand miles from Australia's west coast, Cormoran met with fellow German supply ship Kulmerland. For ten days, the two vessels sailed side by side. Detmers transferred the prisoners from the last six sinkings to Kulmerland and took aboard enough fuel and provisions to sustain herself at sea until June of the following year. Following their separation, Cormoran's direction shifted westward. After essential engine maintenance was performed at sea, Detmers initially intended to mine the waters near Perth. However, he then received an intelligence message from the Naval High Command that hinted at a potential golden opportunity, an Allied convoy's departure, accompanied by a British cruiser. Adapting to this intel, Detmers steered Cormoran towards Shark Bay, located further north on Australia's coastline. As Cormoran steamed northeast bound on the afternoon of November 19, 1941, a Royal Australian Navy vessel was suddenly sighted on the horizon. While Cormoran achieved sinking after sinking, on May 15, 1941, Captain Joseph Burnett assumed command of the Sydney light cruiser. This Aussie captain was no stranger to the sneaky tactics of German raiders, as Burnett participated in planning defenses against early German surface raider attacks and reviewed all reports of Australian warships in action against them. Under Burnett's leadership, Sydney's service from May to August was largely routine, primarily involving escort missions throughout the region. By October 7th, she returned to Fremantle, her new base of operations. On November 11th, she departed for the Sunda Strait once more. After transferring escort responsibilities to HMS Durban, she set her course back to Fremantle, anticipating an arrival on the morning of November 20th. However, on the 19th, a tower crew member spotted a seemingly benign merchant ship, Knowing the importance of diligence, Burnett ordered an increase in speed to intercept. As they drew nearer, he recognized the vessel as the harmless Dutch Strat Malacca, and the captain assumed no immediate threat. By 5.15 p.m., Sydney was almost alongside the mystery ship, the distance between them barely a mile. Sydney's strategic advantage was clear. She could easily target and overpower her with superior range and speed without endangering herself too much. Beneath her harmless facade, Cormoran's crew readied their concealed artillery. Burnett signaled once more, seeking details of the ship's voyage. Sydney's primary eight six-inch guns and four torpedo tubes targeted Cormoran, watchful, yet not overtly wary. But Detmers, through his binoculars, noted Sydney's lax defenses. Her light guns weren't fully manned, with some crew visibly relaxed by the railings. Furthermore, Sydney's seaplane catapult initially poised for a launch, had been retracted. Just then, Captain Burnett requested Strat Malacca's confidential allied code, a detail outside Detmer's knowledge, and Cormoran remained silent. It then was clear to Detmer's. Confrontation was inevitable. Swiftly, he commanded the Dutch ensign be lowered, and the German battle flag was proudly hoisted into the air, as well as her previously hidden weaponry. Within seconds, the unassuming Dutch Strat Malacca became a powerful Nazi aggressor. The fierce duel between the Australian and German ships erupted as Cormoran fired its guns and released two torpedoes. Almost instantly, her shots tore into Sydney, wreaking havoc on her bridge and director tower. In response, Sydney unleashed a salvo that, unfortunately, missed its mark. Cormoran's relentless barrage continued, setting Sydney's seaplane aflame. From the deck, Captain Detmers could almost feel the heat and chaos, seeing the devastation unfold on Sydney's bridge and superstructure. After a few moments of silence, Sydney's third turret roared back, dealing crippling blows to Cormoran. Essential systems on the German ship malfunctioned, 
Fires ignited, and darkness took over her engine room. Amid this maelstrom, one of Cormoran's torpedoes found its mark on Sydney. In a desperate bid, Sydney veered, seemingly trying to ram Cormoran. But even this maneuver wasn't without cost. A shell decimated the top of her second turret. Though battered, Sydney's spirit remained. Yet, as the onslaught continued, her mighty guns fell silent. In stark contrast, Cormoran's guns barked relentlessly, piercing Sydney repeatedly. Inside, uncontrollable fires consumed her engine room. In a haze of smoke and desperation, Sydney released four final torpedoes. But luck wasn't on her side. They missed Cormoran, a ship already on borrowed time. Both vessels, scattered and aflame, continued their deadly dance. Cormoran, stubborn till the end, unleashed one final torpedo at 6 p.m., which, like many before it, missed. After 30 minutes of unyielding combat, both battered vessels were engulfed in flames, echoes of their former selves. Cormoran, her engine room a blazing inferno, fired her last shots. In less than an hour, she had released nearly 450 rounds, and countless more from her anti-aircraft guns. Seeing his ship's grim fate, Captain Detmer's called to abandon ship as night cloaked the horizon. As the minutes ticked by, Cormoran's mines detonated, sending her to the ocean's depths stern first. The toll was heavy. Eighty souls from Cormoran, including two officers, were claimed by the sea, many trapped in the submerged engine room. From the lifeboats, Cormoran's survivors watched as Sydney, battered and burning, faded into the distance. By midnight, the distant light from Sydney disappeared. There was not a single Australian survivor. Cormoran's surviving crew was captured by the Australians. Once taken in, they faced relentless interrogations, followed by years of incarcerations for the war's remainder. During this time, Germany awarded the POW, Captain Detmers, the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross for his leadership. The epic duel story was pieced together from German survivors' accounts, with no input from Sydney's crew. The Australian government remained tight-lipped about the incident, and only a brief description of the encounter was included in the Royal Australian Navy's official history of World War II. This, naturally, gave rise to rumors and conspiracy theories. To many, it's hard to believe that Cormoran, just a merchant raider, could beat one of the Royal Australian Navy's best ships. Some rumored that the Japanese might have helped, especially since Pearl Harbor happened only two weeks following the incident. To clear things up, in 1999, the Joint Committee on Foreign Affairs, Defense and Trade of the Australian Parliament looked into the loss. But this report, too, stated the same. In March 2008, in Western Australian waters, more than 60 years after the epic battle, both wrecks were found lying only seven miles away from each other. Upon inspection, the damage on Sydney's wreck, especially on its front gun, bridge, and torpedo launcher, showed how close and intense the battle had been. There was no other ship, no Japanese submarine involved. The sea had finally shared its secret. But some things will likely remain unanswered forever, like why Captain Burnett didn't deploy the seaplane to check the mystery ship from far away, or why, knowing about the German ships in Australian waters, he failed to double-check with the Navy office about the Strat Malacca. Most importantly, why wasn't the crew ready when they got close to a ship that could be dangerous? In retrospect, Captain Burnett erred getting close to Cormoran, allowing a surprise attack. Having the best ship, guns, and defenses was not enough. Being always watchful, careful, and ready to strike at any given moment is more important. The November 1941 Cormoran Sydney fight remains the most devastating calamity in the history of the Australian Royal Navy.